Budget Angler here. Um, the usual disasters befalling me. I, you can see I'm walking my bike, so I've got a puncture. And it's the second one I've had in three days. And it's really annoyed me because I, um, the first one, I, use, I carry a spare inner tube, so just as easy to whip the inner tube out, whip a new one in, than fiddling about repairing the punch. Then I can just repair the inner tube at my leisure and use that as a spare. And of course, I've used one spare inner tube. The, the, the old one was beyond repair. And um, so I haven't got a spare with me today. I, mean, I didn't bring a punch repair kit either, which more for me, I suppose. But there, there we go. These are supposed to be reasonably good tyres for puncture protection as well. So a little bit irritated um, because I was going out to recce a couple of spots that looked really good on me way around last weekend or the weekend before I found a few spots. So I was really, really hoping to try them. Um, it's not the end of the world. I can go back to one of my favourite spots, which is just around the corner, and the bikes and walkable home from there. So it's not, you know, it's fine. Um, I will get some fishing done, but I was just hoping to show you guys, you know, new location. I was really hoping for Chub at this point as well, where I was going to try. So um, yeah, a bit of a pain. Um, but anyway, what can you do? That's uh, <clears throat> the joys of cycling. You're probably getting a lot of wind on the microphone now, so I'm going to call it, stop it there, and hopefully get some fish for you. Well, there you go, guys. An absolutely stunning little brown trout there with beautiful red markings. Hopefully, it's not too too much reflection on him. He's absolutely beautiful little fish, just on a bread flake. So at least we've got a fish, despite the uh, trials of the morning. There you go guys, another one, little, little bit smaller than the last one, but absolutely beautiful, the red spots in him, fantastic little fish. I think because it's really pushing through, we've had a lot of rain, I think the trout are going to be dominating um, the feeding. No, I think the uh, delicate roach might be a uh, hold up somewhere, but we'll try and find them. Oh, this one's better. Oh, it's only a little one. God, he's got it. He's really pulling hard. Yeah. There you go, guys. Another little brownie there. He's absolutely mad for the trout at the moment. I was hoping for a few little roach, but I'll take these any day of the week. They're absolutely fantastic. Loads of, loads of nice bring. Got him. So I was born and bred in like wormy turbot. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, you know King Clear? Yeah, 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 yeah. So I fish all my life. When I was a kid, it was like wall to wall fishing on the There you go guys, cracking little brownie, they're only a tiny one, but absolutely brilliant, they go mad in this fast flowing water. Yes. There you go guys, beautiful roach there in the sunlight, a bit count, oh I'll wait for that train to go by. A bit counterintuitive on the maggot, I thought the maggot would bring the trout and the bread would bring the roach, but there you go, absolutely brilliant. Right, back home now for this brief bit here, guys. I just, um, a few people have been asking, and I've had such a great year on bread, successfully catching fish in loads of locations. All my best fish have come on bread, and a few people have been asking how I've been putting the bread on the hook. So just wanted to give you a quick demonstration of how I do it. No one's ever taught me this. This isn't a method I've looked or seen. It's just the way that seemed logical to me, and I've used it ever since I was a kid, really. Um, so the, the bread I use, you want a nice bit of white slice, quite a doughy, soft one, the stuff that if you... If you pinch it, it stays stays nice and squidged down. And um, Warburton's toasty in the sort of wax paper packet is my favourite. Um, and so what I'm what I'm what I'm 
trying to show you, and I don't know how good this is going to come out, but I'm basically going to pinch the bread around the top bit of the shank of the hook and the eye of the hook. Um, and that, so that's that's kind of what I'm doing. And I don't know how well this will come out on the camera, but I'll try and show you. So you take a small bit of bread. You don't want much for a little hook. This is a size 12. Um, and what you want to do, I'm going to try and do this sort of coherently, um, is just I pinch it onto the eye um, and then sort of leave the fluffy bit around the hook so you so it's not so the hook's not totally exposed but it's also not got a pull for a big doughy bit of bread to get stuck into the fish's mouth so um yeah just kind of pinch it and sort of roll it on and and you end up with that you can see that can you see that there so that's actually almost pinched on the on the eye and up the line and what that then what that does is because it's all dense and heavy here this should sink um it will sink quite slowly because i've left quite a fluffy bit there but of course if you you know you're float fishing um then you'd, you'd have shot on the line anyway and then what happens is um in the water because it's more doughy and heavy it will fall that way down so so if i can sort of so it'll go fall fall that way down and the shot will obviously pull it and um, I mean, I don't know if that makes a difference, but one thing I will say is if you're trotting on a river and you want to hold the float back a bit, which right, right, which then will raise the bait as the flow picks the line up, it'll always kind of be in line with the float, sort of following it that way. Um, but I mean, you know, I suppose you you could sort of say it might sit funny in the water if it doesn't fully, fully sink, it might sit funny in the water. But I mean, for me, it's tried and tested. I can't, you know, I... I've never really sort of worried oh it looks you know what it looks like underwater because it catches nearly every time this this style of fishing and this works on a small hook even like a tiny little hook just use the, the tiniest bit of bread you know like that and like i say a 18 or a 20 and you just do the same you know you end up with the same sort of cone shape which is hat shaped bit of bread now i've not researched this i've not looked into it i kind of just do my own thing and put it on youtube so they're, they're not, I've not actually looked if there are better videos than this out there, but it's just the way I do it. People always ask, and, and generally this is the way I do it. And I'll just show you one other way I might consider doing it as well, if the um, which I've I've used when I'm fi uh, sea fishing for mullet. I'll just show you another way I, I, I've done it. So the other way I um, sometimes do it is just instead of making a sort of cone shape, you sort of like a, just just like flatten it on, so it's it is actually you know what you'd call a flake and when the bread's nice and doughy that's squeezed on and um i found this i've in, in the med when when i've been fishing for for mullet they they take stuff off the surface or just below the surface and their lips are their mouths are really flat and long and so they can just sort of engulf that whole thing into their mouth and you end up with an then side hooking them in the lip so that's just another way to do it i will use this in um course fishing in the uk as well just just as a, a, a way of presenting it differently um, and also if you're trotting on a river and you really want the bait to flutter in the in the flow if you hold it back then that you know that will that will flutter really well so um yeah that's just just a couple of ways i i hook bread or, or put bread on the hook and i know a few have been asking in the comments so um thanks for asking and hopefully that's been helpful for you well guys hopefully that was an enjoyable session for you um it's the next day now obviously you couldn't have asked for a different day weather wise i'm at a different river different location this is where i was planned to come yesterday um it is so misty today it's really atmospheric um i mean like a wooded stretch here um i'd spotted this place on a bit of a recce a couple of weeks ago and then i got chatting to someone that lives not far away and they also mentioned it to me so i thought well, it's a good enough place to start as any i'm gonna try fishing a little um just a little tip little quiver tip rod probably just a little link ledger um, I haven't really got any feeders that are heavy enough. It's a bit of a flow there, and they're, um, the feeds I've got are not really river feeders. The classic, a massive minnow. There you go guys, cracking little roach there, just on a bread flake.
There you go, guys. Lovely little roach there. That was just on a single maggot. Absolutely cracking little fish. This is tricky. After all that, well, there you go, guys. After all that, it's a little brown trout. I, I really thought it was going to be a chub. I'm, I can't say I'm disappointed because it's a lovely fish and it's great fun on the uh, light gear in the fast flowing water. But yeah, I really would have liked a chub, but we'll keep trying. Another little roach there. I have to net everything in this swim because I can't swing anything in because of all the trees above me. It's a bit of a faff to be honest, but um, I'm, I haven't actually lost a float today, which is a bit of a miracle considering where I've been fishing. Another brownie there, guys. Absolutely brilliant fun these are. Do you know what? I was assured there are no brown trout in this stretch. It was going to be, you know, a chubba chuck. So. Um, there you go, just goes to show. It's getting a bit gloomy now, so I don't know if his colours are coming out, but he's a really nice fish. There you go, slightly better little roach there, nothing massive but very welcome and very very pretty. Another cracking trout there. This one's actually, I don't know if it's showing up in this, but it's actually more more brown than, than the other trout. I know it's a brown trout, but it just seems a bit more of a brownie colour. Absolutely lovely. And that was, I just um, thought I got caught on a snag, but I think it might have actually grabbed a little flake of bread as I was retrieving it, because it didn't feel like there was anything there. And then suddenly it hit it, almost like it was like hitting a lure. So I think that's what it did there. Just chased the little bread flake. Well, that's a little bit more like it guys just just getting slightly better the roach now very pale fins on this one absolutely lovely i don't know how much of anything you can see it's a bit gloomy but if the footage come out gloomy i'll put some stills up of some of the fish of course well i would have been doing that anyway but yeah i think because it's getting a bit dusky it seems to be the time when the roach just started hitting this one came on two white maggots well guys there you go that was the weekend probably not quite um the videos i'd planned but we've got out we got some footage and we caught some fish so i'm really happy about that hopefully you've enjoyed that as much as i've enjoyed filming it and the uh putting the bread on the hook was useful for you i know a few have been asking about that so um if you have enjoyed it please hit that thumbs up please drop me a sub and i'll see you guys in the next one cheers guys fish on <laughs>